morning, fellow citizens of the household of God. This is Monday morning espresso shot. I pray that your hearts, your minds are ready and able to receive the word on this morning. I believe because the word has a way of breaking through fallow ground, has a word, has a way of breaking through weariness, breaking through uncommittedness. I believe that this word this morning will lead us to a more secure relationship with God. So if you would grab pen, paper, and Bibles and get ready for a powerful word from the Lord. We will open with a word of prayer and then jump right into today's discussion. So again, grab pen, paper, and Bibles and get ready for a powerful word from the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. Now, God, forgive us of all sins, sins of the mind, the body, and the spirit. God, prepare us for your use. Prepare us to receive your word on today. Condition our hearts, condition our minds, God, that we may receive what thus saith the Lord and then make the necessary adjustments. Let us not make those adjustments in anger or regret, but God, in joyfulness, in glee, to know that we are now getting closer to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, touch every heart, mind, body, and spirit to receive your word in Jesus' name. Anoint their ears that they may hear your word. Anoint my mouth that I may speak only what you've said. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Everyone say amen. Good morning, good morning. My baby, Linda, is watching. God bless you. I love you, girl. You and them grandbabies. Yeah. All right. Do what you say and only say what you do. Some people say that's easier said than done, but we do it every day. Do what you say. Good morning, Amanda. Good to see you, love. God bless you. Do what you say and only say what you do. In other words, when you use the word, I'm trying, I don't know if people understand that that will not fly with God. For he made us in his image and his likeness. In other words, he made us to be able to do what he does. Please don't run with that. When I say that, first of all, God did. He said, did I not call ye gods? Little g. In other words, you're not at my level, so don't put yourself there. But I did give you the right to choose, creativity, commitment, love. I gave you all of the necessary ingredients to be great people. So it isn't as if we don't have the ingredients it takes to complete a task. For God set his hands to nothing that he did not complete. He set his hands to nothing that he did not complete. Anything God set his hands to, he completed. As a matter of fact, I'll take it even further than that. Anything God spoke, he spoke in completeness. So there was never an opportunity to accuse God that he tried to do something. He did not try to give us salvation. He gave it to us. He gave his only begotten son. We feed the failure of our poor relationship with God in the excuses we use. All excuses are asking permission to pass, get away with, be released from responsibility. Excuses, excuse me. Is the question. Will you excuse me? No. There's no excuse. None. Let me just let me just lay it all out and put it in your face. Here we go. When you want to sit down and eat your dinner, your lunch, your your your, your breakfast, do you try to do it or do you do it? If there is no sickness present in your life where you may throw up something, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about your commitment to you. When you want to do something, you do it. 
When you want to sit down and eat, you eat. When you want to look at your phone, you look. You don't try. When you want to go to work, you go. Now, even when you're doing a new job, you might rely on that word try for a little bit. But after a minute, you know what you're doing. Ain't no need in trying no more. You're doing it. So then that commitment removes the power of try. See, try is a very powerful word. It allows you the opportunity to say, I attempted, but could not do. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like that. I don't like attempting anything and not being successful at it for I won't attempt something that I don't know I can be successful at. What I look like trying to attempt to go fight Mike Tyson when I know I'm going to lose. Even at the age the man is today, we probably are close to the same age. I'm still going to lose. What I look like, I tried. No, you won't hear that from me. Why would I try something I know I can't do? Only to say I tried. So we try, and it seems like oftentimes when you, okay, let me give you some more. Uh, when you go on vacation, do you try to go on vacation or do you go? When you have your me time, do you try to have your me time or do you? Now, some parents may be able to fall back on try because their children cut off their me time. I get that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your commitment to you for what you want to do and accomplish. What you set up in your heart to complete. For instance, there were a lot of people who for who for, for months said that they were trying to get closer to God, but only uses I'm trying as an excuse, but then show up to church on Easter. Like that's going to make a good impression on God. Do some Easter egg hunt for your kids. Like that's got anything to do with God. He's still waiting on a relationship with you. But you trying. Your work gets in the way of your relationship with God. I'm trying to be a better Christian. How do you try to do that? Do you try to be a better human being or do you just be one? Most of us don't have uh, a prison in our view because we know the things it takes not to go to prison, so we don't do them. We don't try to not do them. We don't do them. Period. Because we don't want to go to prison. What I look like going out there trying to commit white, qual co white collar crimes when I don't know how not to get how to get away with it. I don't know how to. That's not the. And then those who get away with it eventually get caught. But they tried. What? Now, all of this makes sense. And it's relative to us. Because some will not accept the word on today. For reasons of self-conflict. The buts, the tribes, they're conflicted in their heart because they want to say, well, preacher, who are you to say I'm not trying to have a better relationship with God? First of all, remove that authority from me. First of all. Second of all, know that if you are in a relationship with God, you're not trying, you're in it. Now, whether it is a productive relationship or a non-productive relationship is what you should be using. I'm talking to those folk who want to feed you all of these excuses why they can't make it to church, why they got called into work, why they this, why they that, why they took work on the church day that you know you was working, that you was going to church on. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? If you are truly building your relationship with God, there should be no tries in your life. They used to sing a song, Try Jesus. He's all right. Have you tried Jesus? I'm not trying it. 
I'm sticking with him. I don't need to try. Because when you try something, you're unsure about it. When you try something, there's a reason to back out of it. I don't want to try Jesus. I'm with him. We need to get more secure in our walk with God and stop trying. We spend so much time trying. And here's the funny part. Why is it that everything we want to do, we do. But when it comes to God, that's the only time we use the word try. Now, some people may use a lot of tries in their life. And for them, I would tell them, look, just, just be committed to what you're doing and, and stop trying and just do it. Uh, when people say, well, I'm trying to be a good, no, either you are, or you aren't. There, there is no middle ground. Either you are or you aren't. Either you're engaged in a relationship where it's reciprocity at work back and forth, or you're in a one-way journey where you're soon to exit. Because there's no return on your investment. Either you're in it or you're not. Now, anyone be in Christ, they're supposed to be a new creature. The reason why they keep using try is because they haven't accepted their new creature, their new mind, their new heart, their new. You can't serve God with the old you. The old you don't agree with God. The world you don't agree with God. The only thing that's going to agree with God is that that comes from God. Go to Matthew chapter five, verse 33 through 37. Matthew chapter five, verse 33 through 37. This is going to explain that we are to not try, but we are to do, we are to accomplish. We are to be people committed to the task laid before us. We are, be, we are to be people of our word and deed. If you give your word, do what you say you're going to do. And only say what you will do. I have a young man who is at church regularly. And whenever I talk to him, I respect him so highly. I really do. And it's, it's for one particular reason. Because if I'm talking to him and I tell him something, and if he's not going to do it, he will tell me point blank, Bishop, I'm not going to do that. It may catch me by surprise, but then I, I have to hug him and love on him because God desires of us to be men and women of our word to do what you say you're going to do and only say what you will do. Don't come to me talking about I'm going to try. First of all, what you're doing with God has nothing to do with me. So if you base your relationship off of me, is your relationship married to me or to God? It shouldn't be based off of me. So my shortcomings or my difficult or whatever, my struggle, anything you might see of me that causes your journey to stop, you shouldn't be looking at me so close, first of all. Second of all, your journey should not be based off of my life. For we all stand before God alone. There will be no name dropping. There will be no association affiliation. Everybody from this group get in. No, it don't work like that. We all stand alone to be judged. So then you can't get before God and say, I tried. It won't work. He already put success in you. Now, if you are a successful person in your life where you are employed or you're doing things and you, you, you are a contributor uh, to society, da, 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 um, you've experienced the success and joy of the Lord. In the things that you do. Why is it when it comes to God, you, you try? Let's read the word. Verse 33, again. Ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time. 
thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. Verse 34, but I say unto you, swear not at all. This is Jesus talking, by the way. Neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. 36, neither shalt thou swear by thy head. Because thou canst not make one hair white or black. You can't. So listen, we can't even swear. Swear. How about let me give you, I promise. Let me read 37 for you. <laughs> but let your communication be. Yea, yea. Nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh evil. The more you speak, the deeper it gets. The more evil it gets, the more lies you tell, the more excuses you give. I've had opportunities where I cons where I, where I console people or talk to people or or put the, uh, you know counsel uh, in any fashion. Even when I console people, they always want to dispute with me back and forth. And listen, I'm going to tell you just so everybody know, if I'm talking to you, it is a three-way conversation. What you saying, Bishop? I'm hearing from God. So when you dispute, you're disputing God, not me. And if God has nothing to say, most likely I'm quiet. So all these excuses you give, God has already spoken the truth to me. So then I, I got to sit there and be quiet and listen. Well, I'm trying. Mm. Well, God knows my heart. You're right. He does. Why do you use that excuse with God? when they call you into human resources for not being a person who's able to complete a task at work? Are you going to say, well, y'all know my heart. Does it work there? Why do you use it with God? Light company coming to cut your lights off and the light man come to your door to knock on your door to inform you and you tell him, well, you know my heart. Do you think he not going to turn off your lights? Do you think they're not going to turn off your water just because they know your heart? Well, we know you a good person. Hmm. Who don't pay their bill? Hmm. So let's cut the water. Well, I'm trying. Hmm. Well, we trying to give you some extra time. And we did. Now, we're going to give you all the time you want because we turn your services off. So you just take your time and keep trying. But we're not going to keep letting you get further in debt. Why is it that we only use these excuses with God when it comes to a relationship that has to deal with forever? See, some of y'all disconnect this. Your everlasting is connected to your relationship with God. So where you spend eternity has to deal with you, these excuses you give it. I'm trying. God says now at the end, I love this part. He says, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. When you engage in these different excuses and you start feeding them, God said they don't do nothing but pile up and get more evil and more evil. You start telling more lies and more lies. More excuses equal more lies. Well, I, I, I've been sick. I've been this. I've been that. I, I, I had to work. I, da, 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 da. Okay. Do you not know God sees all? God knows all. You ain't too sick to go to work. You go to work sick, but you won't come to the house of God. Hmm. Hmm. I would, I tried. Hmm. Your alarm go off for work and you get, you get, you get yourself up. 
you get dressed and you put on your best face and you go to work. But then when the alarm come off for of church or the alarm come off, go off in the morning for prayer. God know my heart. Mm. When do these excuses stop? When do we begin to engage with God as we expect God to engage with us? You don't expect God that when you ask him something for him to say, well, I'm trying. If you ever heard that from God, it would dissolve your relationship with him because you would say to yourself, if he's a God that cannot do but try, why am I serving him? God has always been a God of completion. Why would he why would he make us if we were not able to be a people of completion? He made us to be able to complete tasks, to complete things. So I tell you again, do what you say and only say what you will do. It will improve your relationship with God. It will improve your, your outcome of life. You'll be able to withdraw more from life because it will be God, the giver, who gives it to you because of your relationship with him. Stop trying and just get it right with God. Stop trying and begin to pray. Stop trying and seek his face. Turn from your wicked ways. Then will he forgive your sin and heal your land? He'll forgive you. He'll heal you. And he'll prosper you. He said, I would that I would that you would prosper even as your soul prosper. Do you not understand as you get closer to God, your prosperity increases? So if you're looking to do better, have better, have more, do better in life, uh, get better with God. I don't care what position you're in. I don't care what you do. I don't care how lovely, how lovely your life might look right now. It can always be lovelier. It can always be better. There can always be more. God will put more in your hand for you to be able to touch more lives, to do more, to be a better example to people. It depends on you. So either you can continue in these excuses and believe that they're going to suffice because you see no immediate trouble in your life. See, that, that gets some of y'all. Y'all think God sleep because you keep doing something over and over and there's no immediate trouble for you. My, my daddy, God bless him. I love him to death, but he taught me something really, really serious. When it came time for us to be chastised, he brought up stuff he had been holding for a month. Remember? told you you might get by but you're not gonna get away wait a minute i don't remember that daddy y'all thinking y'all getting by with god but you haven't gotten away god is letting you because he gave you the right to decide he's letting you dig your hole and y'all got some pretty big ditches out there that y'all need to fill over and get in relationship with God so that you will be a person who do what they say and only say what they will do. Be committed to God. Being committed to God is also a commitment to yourself to worship God, to be truthful with God, to walk uprightly before God, to give God all of you. I pray that you're able to receive this word on today. Some won't be able to because of the conflict within themselves because they're going to say, I tried, I'm trying. Okay. I'm not finna sit here and tell you, we'll keep trying. I'm not finna do that because again, God has given the example. You do what you want to do. So there's no reason to use excuses of trying with God when you don't use it at work, when you don't use it in your family, you don't use it when you go on vacation, you don't use it when you sit down and eat a bowl of ice cream, you're not going to try, you're going to eat it. You do everything you want to do, but when it comes to God, you want to try. God bless you. We love you. We pray that you will be able to receive the word on this morning, that it will change your heart and re-up your commitment to God to be able to grow and to walk in the beautifulness 
of the relationship with him. God bless you. I love you. We will see you Wednesday night for the end of Zechariah. I believe it's chapter 14. I pray that you'll be able to receive what the Lord hath for you on that day as well. Have a great day today. God bless you. We pray your strength, your growth, and your commitment be enriched in God. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you. See you next time. Bye-bye.